everybody. What is up, uh, everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and I am joined by Teeny Talking Tina. And you guys asked for it, so hopefully you don't regret it. We are here to do a drunk movie commentary for <laughs> s <laughs> for Scream Two. So, yeah, so we're just going to jump right into it. We have a lot to talk about. We started talking about stuff pertaining to the movie, and we said, let's save it for the review, for the commentary, whatever the hell we're doing. All right, so we have it queued up. If you guys want to watch along with us, it's at 0. 0.00. 0. We're going to press the button, and then we're just going to put the controller away. So I don't want to screw this up. Here we go. In 3, 2, 1. All right. You see Dimension, the logo, Films. Alright, we're jumping right into it. Alright, let's take our first shot, because I'm getting scared already. We're doing that already? Okay, sneak preview because tonight only. Stab! I love the fact that... That is already an issue right there. What, that, that, that the movie's big, called? Oh, the that big, big giant. That big giant knife, knife right there. What if that like falls and uh, you already got your first kill? You know what's weird is that this whole movie theater seems to be dedicated just to this one horror movie. Look at that. I, as awesome as that would be, that's not realistic. There's no movie theater that would change it all around for any big horror movie. But I do like the sentiment. I do like the idea Look of it. Look at this. Oh, uh, what? You don't like Jada Pinkett Smith? No, she's bitching. Yeah. That's all she's doing right now is bitching. Well, that's, that's true. That's what her face says. She, bitch. She's very much against watching this horror movie. She doesn't want to see white bitches get their ass uh, killed. Racist bitch. Well, she wanted to see a Sandra Bullock movie. But she, you know, she makes a good point. These horror movies aren't favorable to black actors, black characters. You have to admit, black people are the first to get killed. I never came to a movie theater where you had to come up to the... To a booth like that? To the booth outside like that. Yeah, I think this is like more of an older thing. I want to say... And they give you free costumes. Yeah. Maybe this is like a screening. You know what I mean? And this is in bad taste. How is this legal if the killer in the first movie... What, the same exact mask? Uh, how is this legal? Yeah, yeah, right. It's like, are you really going to start selling and promoting the actual costume that the real-life killer wore to kill people? Like, would you start selling Ted Bundy outfits after his, like... I mean, they made plenty of movies about the guy. Oh, no! Sorry, I screwed this up. Okay, hold on. Okay, here we go. Stepped on the controller. I did. Okay, hold on. I'm getting us back to where we were. Based on the book, The Woodsboro Murders by Gail Weathers. Another white bitch. <laughs> Alright, let me turn the controller off. So I don't have to worry about that. Alright, All right, so now, if hopefully if you guys are watching at the same time and you're wondering if we're synced up, we're now seeing... Jada Pinkett and Omar Epps are sitting in the movie theater. They're about to watch Stab. Honestly, I would watch Stab. We need a, I need a drink after that. Oh. Uh, well, I would watch Stab. I mean, clearly this isn't what Casey Casey Becker's house looked like, right? J uh, Drew Barry. Heather Graham. This is Heather Graham playing Drew Barrymore's part. I love that they did this. I love that they reshot the original movie with obviously different actors, different... They, they Hollywood it up, you know? Because, like, she didn't take a shower, obviously, but no, the movie version, the yeah, movie version, first. you're going to make it, uh, is this Jaeger? Yes, it Damn, is. Damn, we're, we're going to go for the hard stuff. Huh? Right yeah. Look at the audiences are, are ooing and eyeing over, like, yeah, look at, yeah, she's going to be naked. You have to admit, Jada Pinkett makes a good point. Why does she have to be naked? What about the plot? Well, but I got a stiff one. <laughs> Uh, does he realize he's taking a date to, to he's talking about getting hot over a white chick and the crowd's pissed because she we didn't see her naked look at this is very Hollywood this house too I mean Drew, Barry, Drew Barrymore's house was very you know glass and everything it wasn't glass house like that that's the wrong movie what do you mean the glass house Okay, no, King. Drew Barrymore's house, remember, she had the glass windows where he threw the yeah, window in. Yeah, but it wasn't like where that. Where he threw the chair in, I mean. No, it wasn't like this. No, my point is, is that 
the stab movie is overly look at this him being on the roof like he was just in the window but again it's a Hollywood movie alright I'm take the shot All okay right. Yummy. Yeah, it's gross. <laughs> She's asking him for uh, popcorn. And shit. I'm trying to open this up. He said cheap ass. <laughs> oh, I guess you took a bigger shot than I am. Yeah, you probably should have taken yours first. Smells like Coke. What? <laughs> so. Yeah, I I would absolutely go to the screening, by the way. I want to go out there by myself. No, you would make me go with you, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you want me to get raped outside by myself? Jesus <laughs> I Christ. would be so dramatic. I, I also would be pissed, though, to be missing the movie right now. <laughs> it's based on a true story. Thank you. A couple of years ago. So Scream 2 came out a year after the first Scream. But apparently it takes place a couple of years later. Interesting. Uh, you know, usually when you fast track a sequel like this, when you come out one year later, it's, whoa. Now that's fucked up. <laughs> I should do that to you. Next time we go to a horror movie... Well, not too many uh, theater going experiences right now, but. Do you want to cling? Ooh. My bad. Here. Let's go see Sandra Bullock. <laughs> this year. What Sandra Bullock movie? Uh, uh, 1997. What would be outright? Uh, Speed was 94. Miss Congeniality was. 2000. I wonder what movie they're referencing. Hope Bloats, was that her? Was that Sandra Bullock? Tina, was that Hope? Was Hope Bloats? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> the popcorn, at least they got that right. The flames aren't big enough. Well... <laughs> Maybe they didn't draw. They maybe didn't just started. Dramatize that. Or... I will say too, this audience in a horror movie, as far as how rowdy they are, very accurate. I've been to many horror screenings where the crowd is that loud, is that rowdy, and it's annoying. I mean, sometimes I've you get it. Never been to a theater. For screenings for horror movies, like Ouija uh, that I've been to, or um, Insidious Chapter 4, certain horror movie screenings I've been to where it's like that, and it's ridiculous. It's annoying. Uh, but also, if the movie sucks, it's whatever. I'm like, not even going to shut the door. Eh. Uh, when you go. When you gotta go, you gotta go. Now, he should not. You. This is what you get for being nosy. He should not. Yeah, he should not have this done this. This is what you get. He should not have done this. What are you doing, man? What are they saying? Like, what? Yeah, see, he's way too... You much. can't... He's way too... Uh... Oh! He just had the strawberry gusher. <laughs> Damn. Oh. You think his eye would have popped out? They killed the black dude, right? right like five minutes in. It's fucked up, man. Now, who do you think's doing the killing here? Do you remember who the killers are? In, no. In the second movie? You don't. Really? In the second movie? Yeah, I do. I think I do. Dead. He got him right in the ear. That was impressive. I would watch a stab movie with Heather Graham and you know Tori Spelling as Sydney. I don't know, that might be a little rough. I 
many black women are like this when they go to a horror movie. They're very vocal. They're talking to the screen. Now, this is creepy. The killer is pretending to be the boyfriend sitting with her. So they obviously know they're together. Yes. he. Uh, the killer knows who she is and is going after her for a reason, yes. Now, that, I don't think that happened. Him jumping out of the window like that. Oh, they did recreate the shot, though, of Drew Barrymore getting stabbed. Ready? How would they know that in such graphic detail? That knife didn't go in. Well, it's a movie. I, yeah. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> I like, though, your point. It didn't look as good as it did in the first movie. Because, you know... Now she's seeing the the blood on his jacket, which is really the boyfriend's. Fucked up. Now you know clearly this this opening isn't as good as the Drew Barrymore kill, but it is a pretty. How is how is no one seeing this? Look at this guy right he's, here. He's like, get the fuck Look out of the way. Guy. He's like, get out of my way. Yeah, no, nobody's nobody's paying attention because they're so wrapped up in this fucking movie. Um, is there anybody? Look at there. Are, there are some people. Look at she noticed. There are some people that you, that you see who are noticing at least something weird's going on. They can't tell. Uh, see that there's a blonde woman right there who was looking. Is she I looking? can't tell. I'm oh. trying to look at the other people who are trying to notice. It's not till she's on stage where everybody realizes what's going on. And he just left. Whoever the killer is. So judging by him wearing the boyfriend's clothes, I'm pretty sure I know who was the one who killed her. Alright, now, all right, now people are realizing... I think we just saw your favorite scene in the movie. We just saw Jay Pinkett get, uh, get killed. Five minutes in. You think Will's happy about that? Well, after that entanglement. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Probably watched that over and over again. Like, he probably was like, baby, let's watch Scream 2 tonight. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> Alright, so we cut to Sydney's in college. So I guess that, because I don't remember, what grade, do you remember what grade Sydney was in, in Scream 1, as far as high school? She does look a couple years older, like, even though it's just one year, I think it's the haircut. Her hair being shorter. It is. Makes her look like, you know, I could buy this being a couple years, even though it's really a year. Now you have people prank calling her, but she has caller ID, which was very new at the time, Obviously now we everybody has call already. Back then though, no. see she's she's telling this guy he just hung up on. Yeah. Some guy pranking her. Alright. This chick I don't really care for. This is her roommate, her college roommate. She's now her her new best friend because Tatum Rose McGowan was killed. She died. Yeah. So hey, this is Cotton Weary. Leah Schreiber. Back in a much bigger role for the sequel. I like that. I like this actor. And I like his role. Here's a guy who was wrongfully accused of murder. He's now proven his innocence. But not just that. He's sort of taking advantage of the fame, right? Like, yeah. He's I kind of an asshole. It in he's, kind of, face. he's kind of an asshole because yes, but at the same time, if it was me, I would say fuck her. Like, fuck her. She, she almost got me locked up. I was only, you know, proven innocent because of... Someone else trying to kill her. Well, well that and Gail Weathers. You know, Gail Weathers was the one who uh, sought out and wrote that book and everything. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess I should be happy that they have... They just killed a black character. They killed two black characters. And now you have another black character who's her best friend. So, 
But I just, I don't know, I just don't really care for this actress, if I'm being honest. Um, I, I would much rather Tatum be here right now. Uh, I don't buy them as She's friends. Dead. I don't okay. buy them. I don't buy these two as friends, though. Why? Because she's white and she's black. No, 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 not that. It's just I don't. I just she's annoying. This girl. She's very annoying. She's very stereotypical black. You know. At least Jada Pinkett was was more relatable. At least I feel like. Well, she's dead too. Well, I maybe you should have had Jada Pinkett play this role. No, instead. she should. I think they did a good call. You don't even remember this character. <laughs> So now everyone's looking at Sydney because the murders, at least, yeah, well, you got two murders that have happened. Look, look at these reporters. Jesus Christ. Look at this. Oh my God, get off her. I probably wouldn't dick, go to class. Man. I probably wouldn't go to class if I was Sydney right now. But, I, Sarah Michelle Geller! Or Sarah Michelle Gellar. I don't know how you pronounce it. Buffy. <laughs> she, she is Buffy, yes. Uh, this scene wasn't originally in the movie. I watched this with the commentary, the director's commentary and everything. And um, uh, that was Timothy Oliphant, by the way. Uh, there's Jamie Kennedy. Randy. Randy, that's Timothy Oliphant. Uh, and then there's another actor who's, who's in this room that you might recognize him. Who's that dude? Joshua Jackson. Yeah, there you go. All right. Wasn't he in Dawson's Creek? Was that him? He was in The Mighty Ducks. Was too. he not? Was he not in Dawson's Creek? Yeah, he was in Dawson's Creek. I don't Creek. remember. I don't, Mighty Ducks. I don't remember Mighty Ducks. I do not remember the Mighty Ducks. I remember <laughs> Emilio Estevez. I don't remember any of the kids. How do you not remember Charlie? I only remember that one kid who grew up to be some crack addict now. Goldberg. Is that his name? Yes. He's fucked up now. He's, 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 he is. I can't believe Goldberg went down that See his teeth? So let's uh, talk about Buffy. But, okay, so I love this scene, though, because they added this in only because they wanted to establish not only Timothy Oliphant's character as being a big movie buff. Jamie Kennedy, obviously, we knew as a movie buff, but you got to see more of it here. But they also wanted to establish another scene with Sarah Michelle Gellar. Because... Galar. Galar, right? Because only, besides this scene, she only had one scene. The scene where she gets killed. So they wanted to, like, have her be more involved in the, you know. Uh, so I, I like it, but I also like that they are talking about sequels. And they're talking about what's the best sequel. Godfather Part 2, Terminator 2. Uh, great conversation because, obviously, we're in a sequel. And, see, I would have had Randy get the girl, too. Randy should have ended up with Sydney. But that's just me. Where do you stand on that? Do you think Randy and Sydney should have got together? Yeah. Yeah. Of course, though, we're gonna find out that Sydney has a new boyfriend. Yeah. Spoiler. Well, <laughs> if you guys haven't seen Scream Two by now, come on. This movie, this movie's twenty three years old now. Holy fuck. There's her boyfriend, Jerry O'Connell. He looks gay. <laughs> Why do you say that? He just looks gay. That's why he takes it up the ass. Oh my god. I'm, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. There's nothing the wrong way. with that, but he's just got the face. You need to be careful with what you're saying right now. It doesn't look believable I feel that bad. she's with him. See, that looks, that looks forced. I feel bad for Randy that he, he, he's the third wheel right now. I mean, she has to know that he has a thing for her, right? Maybe she thinks that he's just a really nice guy. Yeah, that, that seems to be the case, poor guy. I've been there. <laughs> what the... Always the good best friend, but never the bachelor. Right? That was what that. did she do to her? She cut it and colored she it red. She put orange in it. It's red, isn't it? It looks orange. It's red. It looks like she looks like it's, a Halloween it's cat it's red on highlights. top of her head. I like this actor. This is her new cameraman. Uh, another black character. I know, because God knows what happened to Kenny. Yeah, poor Kenny. I really did feel bad for Kenny. 
Especially after how he he directly saved Sydney in his last moment before dying. Um, hey, look who it is. It's, uh, what's her name? Tina, what's her name? Um, that's Roseanne's sister, isn't it? Yes. And that's, uh, Sheldon's mother. I didn't watch Big Bang Theory, but I do get your reference. I don't know her name. I, I just know her character's name. Yeah, I figure her name, too, but I know that she was, she, didn't she win an Oscar, like, two years ago? Did she? Uh, now you're gonna make me look this up. Never mind, I'm not gonna look it up. I don't want to get distracted. But, okay, so you see that she's a reporter right now, right? It's funny to see now Gail Weathers being the one chased and reported on. Gail Weathers is still technically a reporter, but she's also become a celebrity by her direct involvement in the events of the first movie and that she wrote a book about the first movie and now she's become a... See, like, she's literally still trying to report this while still being the center of it, too. So it's 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 an interesting place to play her character. That's orange. It's definitely orange. It's red. It's, I, that's and orange. I don't mind her hair. Her hair is definitely... Her hair... Guy. Her hair in this movie is a thousand times better than her hair in the third movie. I hated her hair in the third it's movie. It's distracting. Do you remember her hair in the third movie? No, I don't. It, oh, ugh, ugh, it's gross. Distracting. I, I, I don't mind her hair here. It is weird, though, when you jump from the first movie to the second movie, how different a lot of these characters look. Even Jamie Kennedy has facial hair now, right? And he looks a little older. Yeah, he just came in a little closer to show you. <laughs> Yeah, that's her. Oh, look who it is. It's Rebecca Gayhart oh, and... Why are they sticking out their boobs like that? And uh, Portia uh, Ellen's wife. And uh, Rebecca Gayhart, I know her from. You ever see Urban Legends? No. Oh, okay, well, she's in that. It's another horror movie. It's a horror movie that tried to be like Scream. It's okay, but it's not nearly as good as Oh yeah, so they're in a sorority. They're trying to get them to be come to the party. Sisters. Yeah, right. Exactly. They're trying to get them to join. Exactly. I, but they really only want Sydney because of her fame. Yes. And I think Sydney can see through that. Sydney doesn't look like a sorority a, girl. Yeah. Yeah, no. My sister was in a sorority. Her nickname was Mel. I don't know why. I have some theories, but uh, me I, too. But, but I will my not. Sister, I don't think so. I will not talk about that with you. To I don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> Maybe she talked a lot. Yeah, sure, <laughs> absolutely. Dewey, Dewey, who was supposed to die in the first movie, uh, at the last minute they wrote for him to live. So it's interesting to see, you know. It's also interesting to think about, like, what if they didn't do that? What would these sequels be like without Dewey? I, you know, it, it'd be weird, right? It would be weird. You know, but... And also, it would be odd to have Gail Weathers' character without Dewey. No. You know, what would that dynamic be like? I feel we like Dewey... We would be able to see Corny Cox and Derek like Kett's marriage unfold. Yeah, that's in true. In front of our eyes. I know. It's like, I wonder if the fifth movie, they're going to be divorced like they are in like, you just kind of have their characters match up with where they were in their lives at the time. I will say that... I won't reveal the killers. I, look, I'm not staying away from spoilers. You guys should have already seen this. But I will say that when we do find out who the killers are, when we do find out who the killers are in this movie, I will say that it's, in my opinion... Or killer. Or a killer, I will say that it's the third best killer reveal in the series. Obviously, the first movie is the best one. My second favorite killer reveal is actually Scream Four. Pe Some people don't like Scream Four. People shit on Scream Four. I'm not saying I'm not prepared to say Scream Four is better than Scream Two. I, I don't think I can say that. But the killer reveal and the killer motivations. 
I find Scream 4 a lot more interesting as far as the killer goes. Uh, although the killer reveal in, in this one is, is pretty decent. Uh, are we doing this again? Yeah. I'm still working on my... That's why it's called the Shaper. Is that what it's called? He's got a video camera. Of course. This is how found footage movies was, was created. Do you know Timothy Oliphant? The dude with the camera? You know that actor, right? Yes, I do know him. Okay. Um, there's a movie I want to show you where he's the main character. The Crazies. You know how I talked about that movie with you? Yes. Yeah. I, so, yeah. that He played Hitman in the movie based on the video game. But the, hey, there he is. Why would she do that? Because she's a bitch. Because Gail Weathers... Even though they went through what they went through, right? Even though she still has that bitch personality to her. She's still all about the story. She wants to get the, the first ever meeting between... She should have punched her in the face here instead of the first movie. Uh, I'll send you a copy. Bam! <laughs> yeah. Oh! <laughs> she hit her again. Did you get that old film? Yes, I got that old film. <laughs> I love this guy. I gotta learn his name. <laughs> yeah, he... Did you get that? <laughs> yes, I got that old film. <laughs> uh, but all Cotton Weary wants is, is his, his interview. Look at he's <laughs> poor guy. Why would she? She's a... I hate he's See? laughing at her. <laughs> well, because he knows she deserved it, but at the same time, he likes he her. He likes her. Yeah, it's weird. He likes her, but he knows she's a bitch. But I do like that that Dewey. Well, yeah, his name's Dwight. Only uh, Tatum really called him Dewey, so that's how. We, so that's why we know. Him. But uh, do you notice how he's walking with his with his arm and and the and the weird limp? Yeah, because he's paralyzed. Well, not paralyzed. He's walking. He severed his nerve, right? So when the killer stabbed him in the back, now mind you, this was David Arquette's idea to do this. And then, because I watched this with the commentary, I think David Arquette's in the commentary. He said that, like, after a while, he realized that maybe it wasn't the greatest idea because now he had to maintain that throughout the whole movie. So then that's why, by the time you get to Scream 3, it, that's gone. <laughs> he doesn't have that that nerve thing anymore. Uh, but, look, I, I appreciate what he was going for. It shows the effects of the first movie that he clearly went through some shit and he's looking to be alive. Maybe he went through physical therapy and that explains why it's all gone. Sure, sure. I mean, that's if if you want to create uh, an, an explanation. But the real reason is because David Arquette got sick of doing it. <laughs> yeah. I do like them together. You know, I'm pretty sure they were just dating at the time. They weren't married yet. I don't know if they're married by the third movie, like in real life. I mean, if they were married by the third movie, they were definitely married by the fourth movie. Uh, in real life. You know they named one of their kids Coco. I think I did hear that, yeah. Is that weird? Are you saying that's more of a pet name, like a dog name or something? Yeah, yeah no, uh, <laughs> you're I, the one that's saying that. Well, because I had the same thought when I first heard it. Oh, there's the party. So they actually did go to the party. But look how many people are here. She's wearing a weave. There's no way she gets her hair like that. I can't get my hair like that. Who's the, I wish I could. That looks so pretty. Black girl? Yeah. I don't even know her character's name. Uh, did they say her name's Haley? I don't remember. Yeah. Has she been in any other movies? Portia De Rossi? This is the only movie I really know her from. She's in Arrested Development. I've never watched that. The TV show? Yes. I know. Okay. Is this Sarah Michelle Gellar? Yeah, she's she's house sitting, right? 
this upset me a little bit that like you know I feel like Sarah Michelle Gellar has not had the biggest movie career like she's she's obviously known for Buffy and she's been in some other stuff but like as far as movies goes she gets killed off a lot you know like she or she's a whore yeah oh like cruel intentions yeah 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 it's like <laughs> yeah you know what that for saying <laughs> which means but well, well like I know shit. I know you did last summer she gets killed this movie she gets killed uh she's in the Scooby Doo movies but I mean, As a ditzy. Yeah, you know, like it's just she's playing um, the Daphne, right? Daphne, that's what she's playing. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't. Know. I guess Buffy's. You know, look, seven seasons of a TV show being the lead is a pretty good career. I'm not saying she hasn't had a good career. I'm just saying, as far as movies go, it saddens me to see her in a movie like this because I'm like, cool, right? Initially, I'm like, cool. Sarah Michelle Gellar's in this. But then they just kill her off, so it's just like, well, all right, well, there you go. Like, why didn't they make Sarah Michelle Gellar the best friend? I would totally be cool with that. Obviously, the best friend gets killed later. But, so if you're going to kill her, at least put her in a bigger part, you know? Because even Sarah Michelle Gellar as the killer, or as the best friend who gets killed, even her as the best friend that gets killed is still a pretty decent-sized part and she's still a big enough actress to where her death would surprise you. As opposed to just her second scene, they kill her off. I know it's it's the same theory of like, hey, she's a big star, we kill her off, nobody's safe. They're trying to still establish that with, with the sequel, right? Um, it is cool, though, that she's in both I Know You Did Last Summer and a Scream movie, two of my favorite horror movies. I mean, I know we did that summer, it's more like probably six or seven in my top ten. It's not like, oh, are we doing that? Okay. You're doing it wrong. Come on. Cece, that's her character's name. She doesn't look like a Cece to me. No. Cece's are blonde and tall and have pointy noses. Like in the nanny. I never watched that. So, yeah, she tried to call security, but this girl, jump scare. See, that girl should have been killed, not Sarah Michelle Gellar. Why don't they shut the door? Because we need to have the killer get in. Watch the background. I I probably had to watch this movie like three or four times before I noticed him sneaking in like that. <laughs> Although, I mean, it looks pretty obvious right now, but I don't think I caught that the first, like, two times. Yeah, so that's how he gets in. There you go. Ted, is Ted her boyfriend? No, it's not Ted. It, uh, did you forget to set the alarm? Oh, don't forget to set the alarm. This killer has a thing for blondes, huh? Drew Barrymore, Sarah Michelle Gellar... Uh, I guess I'm thinking of Heather Graham, who just played Drew Barrymore, but yeah. No eating in the living room. No popcorn, no nothing, really? That's not... She has a good, nervous face. Reminds me of the scene in, I know you did last summer, where she's in the the store, and the fisherman's like, Pretending he's one of the mannequins. Remember that part? No. Oh my God. Why doesn't she just leave? Yeah. Yeah, leaving would would, but you know. 
yeah, right. I, I don't really have an explanation. Well, she she's also not sure, right? She's not 100% sure. I think by the time she figures out, but you know, by the time she realizes that there's a killer there, he's chasing her. It's too late. This is similar to the Sydney scene in the first movie, right? Where she's on the phone and he comes out of the closet like that. And she runs up the same exact way as Sydney in the first movie. Okay, she is, she's fighting it back a little bit. I would like to see some, like, Buffy, like, kicks and stuff, but she's not Buffy. But yet. she's not Buffy. She's not, I know, I know, I'm just, I'm just she's saying. Every time I see Buffy. her, though, I expect her to just kick ass. And when I don't see her kick ass, it, it, it uh, confuses me. <laughs> and then she's going to get stabbed in the back, like, like a couple times here. Ready? Stab, stab. That's pretty fucked up. Damn. How, how far of a drop was that? Oh. They killed Sarah Michelle Geller. I remember that. I remember that scene being a lot longer. But man, that just that just flew by her death. Yeah. Right. She dies way too quick. See? Oh my god. They won't shut up. Yeah, they're annoying, they're definitely. They're really like that. You know what sucks, though, is that they don't even get killed. You would think they would be characters to get killed off. They don't. They're just there. Let me guess. You know Timothy Elephant from the Santa Clara Diet? With, ironically, him and Drew Barrymore, right? I've seen him in that, but I've known him from other things. Oh, do you? Oh. Do you know who Jerry O'Connell is married to in real life? No, who? I'll give you a hint. Mystique. Rebecca Romaine? She's now Rebecca Romaine O'Connell, yeah. Not Stamos. You mean from John Samos? Yeah, I mean, look, Jerry O'Connell's not a bad looking guy, but John Samos, still to this day, is a, is a pretty damn good looking dude. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know what he's, like, what. What he's done, what he's on, what, what he works. What blood of the young children he's probably bathing in to still look that good. <laughs> Definitely not suicide. Is Gail. Sometimes it's funny to watch these movies and try to figure out who's under the screen mask and who is the one doing the killings and what scene. It's, it's this movie. It's almost impossible to figure out, uh, given the reveal. The first movie was a little easier. Uh, the, the third movie's ridiculous. I don't I don't care for Scream 3. If we ever do a commentary on Scream 3, uh, you'll probably... It might sound like I hate it more than I really do, but because I'll be talking about it, you'll hear why I don't care for that movie as much. At the end of the day, it's okay, but it's... You know, S S Scream 1 is my favorite horror movie of all time, so I'm going to be a lot more critical about a Scream movie that's not up to snuff. Now we get this long, lingering shot on her boyfriend to make you think maybe he's uh, not to be trusted, right? He's the killer. Well, a lot of these new characters you have to be wary of, right? And obviously her last boyfriend in the last movie was the killer. So you have to be, you just, by default, you have to be wary of her new boyfriend. It is her boyfriend. Don't answer the phone. Don't answer the phone. She can't help it. She can't fucking help herself.
Surprise, Sydney. I do like that it's the same voice. Well, it can't be the boyfriend, right? He's right there. Ah! I have a feeling you don't remember who the killer is in this movie. I do. I thought you told me that you remember who the killer was. I do. Okay. You sure? Yes. You think it's the boyfriend? Yeah, look at Dewey Run. <laughs> With his fingers like He's that. It's all like, yeah. Although, you know, brave dude, he, he he goes right in there. Blood. How convenient. He didn't kill him, he just caught him. Yes, I still suspect him. <laughs> I think that, oh, well, I mean, does that cut look deep to you? Mm. Mm. Sydney obviously blames herself, right? It's another situation where somebody close to her. Haley, that okay. Her name's Haley. I'll stop calling her the black girl. All I right, know guys. Racist. Huh? No racist. I'm not trying to be racist. I'm just I'm. That's how I'm distinguishing her from. The... There's a million other black girls in this movie. That... Is there? There was one other one, and she's dead already. <laughs> There's just not a whole bunch of black characters in this movie. Let's be honest. Yeah, Sid needs a character. I will say this about the third movie, even though I just said I don't I don't care for it. I will say that in the third movie, I do like that Sid like you like you see it, it developing here, where she's realizing that she can't be close to people. She can't get herself close to people because all she's gonna do, at least that's how she feels, she's gonna So by the third movie she's isolated herself. She's moved out far away. Nobody's supposed to know where she is, she's distances herself from everybody. And it makes sense as a character seeing her progress there, especially in this movie. See, now they're they're questioning how how much sense it makes that he. Right after he disappeared, yeah, it, yeah, the cops aren't buying it. Yeah, it looks shady. Ah, <laughs> uh, well. That's why she should have been dating Randy in the first place. Every school that Sydney goes to is surrounded by new killers. Figuring by there's by three killers drugs. so far. You think there's three killers? Yes. Maureen Evans, Phil Stevens, and C.C. Casey, are you noticing something? The names of, yeah, see? The names of the victims, Maureen Prescott was Sydney's mother's name, Maureen. Phil Stevens, Stephen was the boyfriend of, of Casey. And then Cece's real name is Casey. So, these people were only picked because their names, they have the same names as the victims of the first movie. That make sense? Yeah. So that's why they went after Jada Pinkett. It's really just because of her name. So it's not as random as it initially seemed, but it, you know, it's it's not the biggest motive to kill her, but you know, 
it's enough to make you real now they look at they have uh, security following them there yeah stay away from me <laughs> I think most of these guys who date her, they just want to get laid by her and then kill her, right? It's just, there's something about, like, they want to sleep with the girl who, like, has this fucked up like, past and history, and then, I don't know. And then want to offer? I, what's, what's the deal with well, that? Well, explain to me why Billy did what he did to her mom. I don't want to and, fuck you and, and kill then, you. And then, yeah, it's weird. Fucking weird. But that was definitely Billy's, uh situation there. so nobody else can like what what's the deal with that yeah. <laughs> you know jerry o'connell played the little fat kid in stand by me you ever see stand by me no i haven't Oh, okay. Ah. Yeah, throwing some shade. <coughs> See, Gail, this is why I talked about this in the commentary for the first movie. Gail is a fascinating character because she says she wants to help. I don't believe her, but I want to believe her. Right? Like, I want to believe that she's a good person. I want to believe that she wants to help. But at the same time, she's so selfish. She's so self-centered uh, that it's hard to believe. But she does truly care about Dewey. And I, I guess that's where you see the slight good in her. As far as Sydney goes, I don't really know if she gives a shit about Sydney. You know? I don't think she does. Probably doesn't, <laughs> but at least you know that she cares about doing. Two. All right, here's where we get the scene where they really try to. All right, now he's trying to say that maybe Randy's the fucking killer. <laughs> Come on. Um, here's the scene, though, where they really try to lay it on thick that Jerry O'Connell's a good guy. See, he wanted her to sit next to him. Did you see what she did? Did you see that? She, she did not take the seat. singing yes he is He's singing he he is doing he just turned this into a musical he's, he's screaming right now <laughs> he's climbing the table yes like Stripper? If I did this to you in public, wouldn't you be like, all right, dude, fuck off? I would walk <laughs> away. It's so weird when you see stuff like this in the movie, and it's supposed to be like super romantic, and it's, it's just, it's like, man, this would be really awkward in real life. I assume, though, this is the first time he's saying I love you to her, which, how, how long have they been dating? Did they say? Probably like two weeks. Yeah, he's, he's already, he already loves her. This is the cupcake phase. Uh, excuse me. Woo! Oh, 
look, there's another black guy. Look at that. He just high fived him. Ooh, what is that? A necklace? Where's the cap, huh? You have it? Oh, it's right, right, right. That's his fraternity necklace. And he's giving it to it's it's to show that they're together, right? Like it's like a it's like I a, don't know. Is that in go to college? It's like a public statement as like this is my girl. She has my fraternity. Now, supposedly it's against fraternity rules, this Tori Spelling. Tori Spelling. She's playing Sydney, which is they referenced that in the first movie. Oh, Tori Spelling would probably play me. Of course, she did end up playing her. Um, Tori, Sp Tori Spelling is not a good actress. I'm sorry. I forget what movie I then saw. Why is she famous? I 90210 is the, is the first thing. Uh, I'm trying to remember, though, what movie I saw her act in. Here are they re recreating. Look who's playing Billy Loomis. <laughs> Luke, Luke, Luke Wilson. Wilson. Owen Wilson's the brother. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> Them recreating the scene. <laughs> Look at the hair. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Moms leave. Ever. That was like That's his bill. Such bad acting. It is so bad. <laughs> Jimmy Kennedy was like, "I'll wait for the video." <laughs> He's not gonna watch that shit. <laughs> now this is where Jamie Kennedy goes through the rules of a sequel. That's true. There are usually more blood and gore. Although, I'm being honest. So far, I'm not complaining about the kills in this movie. But I will say that the first movie's kills were more bloody than what we've seen so far, right? Like, yes. Casey's boyfriend, Steven, we see, like, the inside of his stomach, right? Yeah. Casey hanging from the tree, that's more horrifying than Jada Pinkett dying on stage like that. So, I mean, like, look, I'm just saying. I don't know if that rule is, applies so much here. I want pizza. They're having, like, McFlurries or something. I know. <laughs> Where'd that go from? <laughs> I'm drinking. Oh, okay. You want pizza. All right. Pizza and booze. Pizza and booze. That, that's a decent, uh... That's a weekend night for sure. <laughs> so, we just missed that. So, Dewey said to Randy, how do I know that, or, like, aren't you... Suspicious. Couldn't you be the killer? And then Randy said, well, if I'm a suspect, then you're just as much of a suspect because we both went through the same shit. And he's like, duly noted. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that. And see, he's saying that maybe Gail Weathers is involved because she, she needs to write a new book. So she's staging, yeah. Them saying that reporters stage the news, that's something that might sound crazy, but if I ever show you Nightcrawler, which I've been wanting to show you for a while with Jake Gyllenhaal, he plays like a TMZ-type reporter who... Stages He the starts news. staging crimes, yes, because he's so desperate to be the first guy on scene. Uh, because, like, you get paid a lot of money if you're, like, a... Oh, my God, people actually do that? Well, I'm saying, like... So You'll get paid by a news uh, studio if you're the first one that has the footage, that has the pictures. That ha you know what I mean? So, yeah. See, he's just now realizing what he's in for. And he just read what happened to Kenny. Oh my god. He just read what happened to Kenny. Can you imagine? Yeah. 
He wasn't gutted. She made that up. His throat was slashed. <laughs> That's true. Man. <laughs> Brothers don't last long in situations like this. That is... You speak in the, the gospel, brother. <laughs> Shut up. It's so true. <laughs> I mean, come on. You can't... You're gonna leave her. You... He's gonna be like, bitch. Fuck this sorry. shit. Yeah. You Fuck can't... This shit. I'm, I'm out. Because she's saying, I need you. She... Um, you can't, you can't be a movie that's meta, right? You can't self-reference, uh, what horror movies do. And you can't be a horror movie that ha that first killed your two main black characters without having another black character mention or point out that black characters get killed early in, in horror movies. Uh, didn't we... Didn't we just see this guy in Titanic not that long ago? Yeah, we did. I mean, he's been in the... I've seen him in something he's else, He's been in a too. bunch of stuff, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just... We recently rewatched that. But, yeah. I like... Sydney is in this play. And she's playing this... This character that's supposed to... Be strong and overcome... Like... She, she needs to use this role to get over what she's going through in her personal life. Actually, now that I think about it, I'm surprised that Wes Craven didn't just do this part himself. Wes Craven, he put himself in the Wes Craven's New Nightmare, the Freddy Krueger movie, where he, well, I mean, he was playing himself, so I guess he had to, but... I, I could easily see him playing this part, you know? Uh, but, yeah. No, you can't. Well, <laughs> look. She's having some doubts. I get it. She could do it. She could do it. But, look, I... You want to see Sydney get to that point where she is strong enough. I feel like we get, we get that at the We've end. We've seen her strong. Well, at we the end of Scream One, strong. at the end of Scream One, yes. But at the same time, imagine going through that, Absolutely. and then, you, what? Imagine going through that, and then, going through it again, or it's starting up again. So I'm okay with her not being strong at the beginning. I'm okay with her. Reverting back to being afraid and scared. It's fine. It's not really though until Scream 4 where she's strong all the way through, right? Where she starts the movie as a strong character and stays that way. Scream 4 is really the only Scream movie where she's a badass the whole way through. And so I will say this right now. If they kill Sidney Prescott in Scream 5... I will be pissed. And I will officially say that Scream 5 is worse than Scream 3 if they end up doing that. But hopefully they won't. Hopefully they won't. Why is it always the third one that sucks? It, yeah, I don't know what it is. It's so hard to get third movies right. Terminator 3. Terminator 3 is not good. I think it's the worst one. Well, actually Terminator 6 that just came out not that long ago sucks. Uh, but, you know, Terminator 3 is not that good, Spider-Man 3, um, uh, what other third movie, uh, Superman 3, it's kind of funny to see, like, the, <laughs> we just saw Ghostface, right? We, well, we did, yeah, he's right there. Now, here's a question, is he really there, or is she hallucinating? Is she, like, tripping out right now? What do you think? Is he, I think he's really there. You, you think he's really there? Now, I think at first, I thought she was hallucinating. But look at, Look at, He just ran off. You see that? So, I, yes. So, it, again, now why are they in the play? <laughs> why are the sorority girls in the play? It's weird. Um... 
here's another situation where, like, it wasn't until the third time where I realized you see him run off. You know what I mean? Uh, so, because I think at first I thought she was just kind of, like, she was tripping a little bit. But the more I've seen this, I've went, like, oh, shit, you see him run off. He was really there. And I think he wants to make her think she's crazy, right? He's, he's, he's creating that doubt. Now, all it takes, though, is for one other person to see somebody it's run off. Him. You know it's him. You're just so dismissive of, of Derek. <laughs> what a generic name. I don't Derek. like him. Do you not like Derek, or you don't like Jerry O'Connell? I'm trying to figure this out. I don't like both of them. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, I like Jerry O'Connell. I... I've seen him in a movie where he rapes Tyra Banks. Oh well, that see now oh. we now we get where the hatred comes from, because I've seen him on Howard Stern and, and, and he comes off as a really chill, cool, down to earth dude. But yeah, he, you said he ripped Tyra Banks. No, not Tyra Banks. Sorry. I've never seen that one. Tara Reid. Whoa, two completely different sides of the spectrum here. Tara Reid. You know. If you if you close one eye and if you squint with the are other, are you serious? Are you gonna they get do look more? Alike. Are you gonna get more upset? They do look about alike. One than the other. No, if it's you just you do. You are racist. If you put them you, side by side next to each other, you get them confused. You would have gotten more <laughs> upset for Tara Banks than Tara Reid. What movie is Tara Reid getting raped that like you? That's worth watching. Like <laughs> Tara Reid. <laughs> Have you seen her act? So it's okay. Have you seen The Crow, Wicked Prayer? It's fucking terrible. So she deserves to get fake raped. I didn't say deserve. No, I'm just saying her acting Everybody leaves... heard it. She deserves to get fake raped because she's a bad actor. Her acting leaves a lot to be desired. Have you seen the Sharknado movies? No, I haven't. Alright, I'm sorry. I, just, I still need to take this. I gotta admit, I'm getting a little, um... I don't feel okay. Googly moogly. I just want pizza. Well, we have pizza downstairs. You can get pizza downstairs if you want. You want to get pizza? Yeah. Alright, go get pizza. I gotta... I'll vamp. Yeah, me too, I'll vamp. Well, we both can't vamp. The whole point of vamping is to... Distract, distract the the fact that you'll be gone. Okay, yeah, you can't leave during this scene. The killer just called Randy. It's him. It's him. The killer. <laughs> you'll put the phone back up to your ear. Well, he's, he doesn't know what to do. Look for somebody with a cell phone. I love, like, you can tell it's the 90s when you have to, like, oh, if they have a cell phone, then they're fucking suspicious. Oh, what are they doing? Cell phone. <laughs> hey. <laughs> What's your problem? <laughs> The House of Sorority Row. I've never seen... That's the original Sorority Row. I've never seen the original. I've only seen the remake. Me too. Oh! Hey! <laughs> Who? <laughs> like, Gail has to, like, exactly say... Her first and last name and what she's famous for. Ugh. <sighs> My clock or your clock? <laughs> Why are you even here, Randy? You're, you'll, you'll never be the leading man. Fuck you! I love Randy's reactions. <laughs> yeah, fuck you! <laughs> I love it. Wrong, wrong guy, dead boy. See, 
I, I hate this. I do. I get it. Look, they wanted to shock us. They wanted to create the whole nobody's safe. <laughs> he, that was so, like, you're not going to get sick. Great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's why Randy took that shit personally. He was like, fuck you, dude. Um, but, just, like, I just, I just... I hate that they do this. I hate it. I hate it. Because, look, I've talked about this in my reviews and for the commentary for Scream 1. Randy is me, right? I relate to Randy the most out of all, out of all these movies. Home over the Zombies boy. <laughs> <laughs> um... Manson, Bundy, He's got OJ. He's got oh no, set. Randy! No, Randy! Randy is being murdered as we speak. He's got in a the van. set though. And I also don't like that they kind of make like they have these guys with the fucking boombox and the music playing. No, it's Randy! Just, like they treat it goofy, but yes. And then you're gonna see Randy. Oh uh, no! Why and did Randy have to die? This, this was shocking. This when I first saw this. I fucking lost my shit, and I I was angry. I'm still this angry. Is bullshit. It's, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. You homo repressed mama's boy. <laughs> uh, just Randy didn't deserve to die. He shouldn't have died. He should have been leading man. He should have proven the killer wrong. I don't like that the killer kills Dunkin him Donuts. after. I know he, but see. They're trying to make you wonder if it was if it was the cameraman because, and you see Randy's dead body. Oh boy. Oh, so whoever the killer was, he took the mask off and he's fainted. <laughs> whoever the killer was took the mask off and just left the van. And you know he's gonna is. be like, "Sorry, no, out." Yeah. Sorry, After you get that, yourself a new cameraman. He just saw a dead body. For I know he fucking leaves her. I know he leaves her. He does. He, he bounces on her. But, so, like, that was a moment. Seeing Randy's dead body. Look. Again, I get it. It was shocking. It was, nobody's safe. It was, hey, we're probably going to kill your favorite character, and we understand that, but we're going to do it. Uh, it does show that this movie has balls. I'll admit that. But, that doesn't mean I have to like it. <laughs> that doesn't mean I have to enjoy seeing him get killed you're going to die tonight the police can't save you that's true is like you can't tell if somebody's just being a dick and fucking with her because obviously we see at the beginning that people are pranking her so this could be just a prank but that but since we know that people are being killed and the killer is, is out there now this is creepy. He's so obsessed with getting this interview that he comes off a little aggressive here. Now why would he leave her alone? Wouldn't shouldn't one guy be with her, or shouldn't one guy be like, "Hey, stay by my side"? He's coming off as kind of aggressive and kind of. Look, he's pissed that he almost went to prison, so he feels like she owes him. Uh, her mother died. That's true. And she was, shouldn't have fucked her, honestly. So. Well, why? Because she was a married woman. It's his own fault. I mean, I think, I think, just, look, her mother's dead, but we need to put more of the blame on that, on the mom. I don't, you know. See, he, he knows that there's money in these interviews and fame and you know, he wants to take advantage. It's Diane Sawyer. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> he just knocks on her fucking head? <laughs> yes, he did. Kick him in the balls. The movie and the book, yes, it's true. He just knocked her in the head. No way. Kick him in the <laughs> balls. Send him down the stairs. Are you turning on Cotton right now? <laughs> <laughs> Like, I get it. I get it. Cotton... He needs to let her go. Cotton... He been, needs to let her go. He's been through some shit. Look at his shoes. I'm only pointing out the shoes, the black boots, is because we saw the person who... Whoever killed Randy, we saw them wearing black boots when they left. If you noticed, Gail's... Ah, uh, it's not Cotton. 
Gail's weather, um, weather, Gail's cameraman was also wearing black boots. They purposely, I, was, I, I only know this because of the commentary, they purposely had all these characters wearing black boots to throw you off in that way. Now he's getting arrested because I'm not Billy Loomis. <laughs> Now, unfortunately, Cotton isn't the killer, like you said, but he's not doing a good job of making himself look innocent this time around, right? He is very aggressive. He's, he is upset, given what Sydney did to him. This is why, like, I know he's coming off a certain way, but honestly, I understand why he feels like Sydney owes him. You know? Maybe if it was you, maybe you would feel like Sydney Ozzy. Oh, huh? drop shot glass. You want to guess more drink? Please. I feel like it's been a while since um oh, well, please. since we've seen Sydney's boyfriend, right? He's off preparing the next kill. <laughs> mm, there Cotton is, just talking up a storm, trying to get himself out of it when all he wants is the 10th out from Diane Sawyer. Yeah, and then who knows where that's going to lead to. Piece of shit. Hey. But look, I mean, think about it. If, if it was you, you'd want to take advantage of... I wouldn't be attacking... Again, though, if if somebody wrongfully accused you of murder and had you put in prison, and you got lucky to get out, wouldn't you be like, "Listen, bitch, you you owe me. You almost fucking ruined my life. Make it up to me." No, I wouldn't be. Attacked. I don't know, Tina. That's I what I've you seen you do. mad. I've seen you mad. I think you're under you're underestimating yourself. <laughs> Enjoying the show. <laughs> He's waiting for a fifteen minutes of fame. He knows he knows that there's a there's a short window to take advantage of this fame, right? There's a short window to take advantage of 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 these murders. And he's yeah, he is trying to take advantage of it. I do like Leah Schreiber. This movie. If you if you change your mind, <laughs> he gave her a card. <laughs> I love that he's not he's not giving up. <laughs> oh, she just heard about Randy, right? Yeah, she just heard about Randy. Oh she, no! She said that she will that somebody needs to call his mother. Sure, that's not a fun phone call to make. Randy should not have died. I'm sorry. It's just I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have done it. Honestly, as much as I like Dewey, I would kill Dewey first before I killed Randy. What do you think about that? Do you disagree, or do you or do you hear me out? But was it you would have killed Dewey? Is that what you said? I said, not that I would kill Dewey. I'm saying I would kill Dewey first before thinking about killing Randy. Like if I said, I can't. But, I wouldn't have killed either of them. I, I don't know what you're saying. I probably wouldn't wouldn't have killed either of them either. But if I'm going into the sequel and I'm saying to myself, okay, I need to kill off one of the main characters. I need to I need to have a big kill here. I would think about killing Dewey before I ever thought about killing Randy. Make sense? Yeah, I hear what you're saying. I okay. said I'm going to kill either one of them, you now, heartless bastard. Now, here's the part that you were talking about where... Uh, it's still kind of seeing things to you. Where he <laughs> leaves. He says, what do you want to be? Uh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bobby. <laughs> See, he already has his cab. See, he... Look at The only reason why this black character survived is because he fucking left. <laughs> That's the only reason why he's still alive by the end of this movie. Piece. Oh, you're getting pizza? All right, cool. I will vamp. I will, I will vamp. 
So here we have the moment where Courtney Cox, Gail Weathers, for some reason, it's it's Courtney Cox's acting. I should not feel bad for her character right now. But yet, I do. Because <laughs> she's, you know, even like Dewey said, great performance. But she's good. Courtney Cox is good. She, I, I, I believe her. I believe her. feel like there is a good person buried underneath all of that suck hole of the media. And clearly these two have good chemistry because they were dating in real life at this point. They were very much dating. But yeah, Joel, the cameraman, smartest character in the movie. He, and I think I also like that about Joel. I'm saying his name a lot more because now I, I just heard his name. <laughs> so um, I, I want to make sure I say it a lot. The reason why I like what Joel just did as far as leaving is because not enough characters in horror movies do that. Right? You don't get a lot of horror movies where a character says, fuck this, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm not going to stick around. I'm not going to stay here and allow myself to possibly get killed. I'm not going to put myself in danger. I'm leaving. And sure, it might come off as selfish or cowardly or blah, 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 blah. But realistically, he would have been killed if he stuck, if he stuck around. And you don't get enough characters who, who are... Tina, I'm talking about how Joel, the cameraman, leaving emphasize how much we don't see that in horror movies enough where a character says, fuck this, I'm leaving. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Yes, and, and, and that being the only reason why they survive is because they just fucking left. Yeah, <laughs> right? I think this is the only movie you I've don't, seen that happen in. Yeah, you don't get that where a character says, I'm not sticking around for this yeah, shit. I don't think we see him for the rest of the movie. You don't. That's the last you see of him is him getting into the cab and leaving. And he's smart because he ended up surviving. <laughs> you know? And you, you just don't get that a lot. And so I, I appreciated that. It shows you that, wow, you really can't just leave a movie <laughs> and survive, you know? It's like usually if a character says, maybe if they're thinking about leaving or if they're going to leave, then they get killed, you know. But I'm saying like if they actually fall through and leave, here, now they're going through the footage that Joel, Joel obviously recorded so much footage that they're going through it to see if they can find if the killer, the killer. yes, and, and get any clues on who he could be. And also, while you were gone, I was talking about how good of an actress Courtney Cox is because her character should be so unlikable, should be such a bitch, that I shouldn't feel bad for her. But the moment when she tells Dewey, I really want to catch this guy, I really want to catch this fucker, I believe her, and I sympathize with her, and I am for it. We almost just saw a sex scene. They're not watching the footage. I know, right? <laughs> Handsy. That's not my footage. Oh, so the killer was recording footage of his own. He was recording Randy, Randy before he killed Randy. He took it from the van. And he's recording them now. Although, to be fair, I don't know how he got a live shot of him recording them on the TV or whatever. Movie. I'm not going to overthink that. <laughs> so, the only time that I know who was the killer killing in a certain scene... I know which person was killing Randy. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I know which character 
was killing Randy, but only because I'm pretty sure they say it at the end of the movie. Like, when they reveal themselves, they specifically say, I enjoyed killing Randy, you know, or whatever they say. Uh, but not just that. Given what Randy was saying, I guess it makes sense why they would want to kill him. But, again, still, I think Randy was one of those characters that was too likable, too special to the franchise. It's only the second movie we've already killed Randy. Think about it. There's a Scream 3, there's a Scream 4, there's going to be a Scream 5, and we've already killed my favorite character in the, in, in the series. We killed him in the second movie. So that goes to show you. Although, I know that they found a loophole. They found a weird way to put him in the third movie. And I, I just, I, I didn't really buy that. It's one of those lame things that they do all the time in movies with characters that have died. But they want to bring them back for another movie. Let me ask you a question. I might have already oh asked God. you. Th- She's going to get caught. I might have already asked you this in the commentary for the first one. I don't remember. Do you find this screen costume scary? Yes, I do. Me too. Thank you. Because I hear people say, mostly because of Scary Movie. Scary Movie has ruined the Scream costume for some people. But I find this Ghostface costume scary. And it might just be the simplicity of the fact that you can't see anything of the person at all. You don't see any skin. It's just, she's just completely covered in black. But there's something about that mask, that long, that long uh, white base. I know it's based off of that painting. It's based off of that painting where the person is screaming and their face is really long and their mouth is long. That's what the mask is based off of. But I, I, I don't know. There's, there's something about this specific mask. And I say that because the Scream TV show changed the mask. You know, you know about this? The Scream TV show? The first two seasons that was on the MTV have I shown you what the mask on the show looks like? No. Oh, pizza. Is that pizza or donuts? I don't know what that is. What is it, pizza? Oh, we're about to see Dewey get killed. Oh, no! Yeah. I don't really understand this. Like did they he shoot He dies a second time? Right, like did they did they expect to kill Dewey and then they change their mind again? Or did they purposely fake us out and have us think that they killed Dewey, but they didn't really kill him? Because obviously at the end of this movie, just like the first film, we see him on a stretcher and that he survived. Why did they do that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. The first movie I specifically heard Wes Craven say Dewey was supposed to die and we brought him back. This movie, I don't know if they really planned on killing him. It might have just been a fake out. It might have just been a thing where they were like, we just want to make you think we killed Dewey, but, we, but we're not going to. Why kill Randy and not kill Dewey? Or why do that scene? I don't know. Uh, uh, it's weird. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird. Well, like I said, I said out... just thought Dewey was dead. Yeah, right. I mean, he clearly only stabbed him once. And so... Which I'm fine with, because clearly... Dewey was only stabbed once in the first movie, and we thought he was dead, too. And I'm not saying it's it's improbable that someone can get stabbed like that and still survive. It's clearly that that could happen. Absolutely. But I'm just saying it's just weird how it's presented that he's dead. Now, nobody trusts Derek, obviously. And he's trying to prove his innocence. I'll still be here. She's very weary of him. No shit, Billy. Although she still kisses him. I think she wants to trust him. But she's so... Oh, did you see that? 
It's funny, in the background, just ran into the bushes. You must have watched these a bunch of times to, like, pay attention to that, right? Well, because every time I watch the movie, I'm always looking for something new. See? You, prepare to die. No, see, this is the fraternity brothers who are punishing him for giving Sidney his necklace. Oh. See, these girls keep popping up in the background of all these scenes, but yet they don't get killed. It's like they're just here. Why? <laughs> Why are they in all these scenes? So, yeah, they... Derek is being uh, tied up and tased right now. You still think he's the killer? Alright, this is a scene that I will admit when I first saw this creeped me out or like gave me a lot of tension. I'll tell you which part I'm talking about. It's not there yet, but. What? Oh, he just killed the driver. Cut his throat. These are the worst security guys in the fucking world. I mean, like, the first guy, okay, fine. The, he, he broke your window and cut your throat. This second guy, though, fucking incompetent shit. Oh my god. I'm pretty sure, given how fast this guy is moving... I can tell who this killer is, at least. See, now, what is this? I'll tell you, this guy sucks. Out of the car, fucker, and then he gets, like, pull over? Really? You think he's just gonna stop the car, the fucking car and pull over? Why did he... He should have fucking gone inside the car and grabbed the guy and pulled him out and fucking held him to the ground. Oh, did you oh. see that? Yeah. We saw half of a second of the oh. that. Oh, yeah, baby. You're gross. <laughs> the gorier, the better. That might be the most graphic kill of this movie. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was pretty fucking graphic. And it looked real as fuck. <laughs> I almost drank this cap. <laughs> I wouldn't have blamed you. He's still breathing. Oh, the the killer is knocked out right now. Oh. Is he dead? Yeah, I, I think so. I don't know. I feel like I feel like her friend hasn't really like there's not there's not really much to her character. She's here. She's, she says that she's Sydney's best friend, but like, do you feel like she's Sydney's best friend, or does she just so happen to be here with her? You know, Tatum. I felt like I I believe that Tatum was Sydney's best friend. And again, you know, if you kept if you kept Tatum alive, this scene with Sydney and Tatum would have been a lot more effective. Or this scene with. A Sarah Michelle Galar, or even Jada Pinkett, you know, I, I just think it would have been uh, more impactful there. So this is the moment I told you about. This scene is what had me super ultra mega tense. Them having to climb over the killer like this. This this scene got to me. Look at she's going for the mask. Whoops! <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, just Oh my get, god, just, just get the fuck go. Just get the fuck out of there, yeah. So I do like that she went to take the mask off, fucked up with the horn, so then she just said, Fuck it, let me just get out first. Alright. I'll come back to the mask after. You know what's funny is that I've seen this movie probably a dozen times and I never knew that her name was Haley. <laughs> if you guys are wondering, we, we have the volume turned down because I don't want any copyright shit. That's also why you don't see any any video of the movie here. I don't, I don't know what the YouTube rules for copyright is. So the volume's low, but we see the subtitles. And I'm seeing her name as Haley. And I never knew that Sydney's friend in this movie was named Haley. You know, you, you could say I'm not a true fan of Scream all you want, fuck it, but that would be a good Schmodown question. What's Sydney's friend's name in Scream 2? Haley. No, but nobody would know it's fucking Haley. I, I, nobody would know that. Alright, now here's the part where the killer's gonna wake up and kill her. Oh my gosh, just get out. <laughs> Ha ha, gotcha. <laughs> but no, that was a good tense moment. That was a good, like, tension building scene. She, she, she needs to know who it is. I will say, I'm like 50-50 on a part of me that thinks she's stupid, Sydney, right now. But there's another part of me that thinks she's right. Now's the perfect time. Yeah, she's to sick of running. She needs to know. And a lot of these movies with mass killers, you don't have, you don't get these situations often where the killer is knocked out right there in front of you, and you're able to figure out who it is. You always find out when the killer wants to reveal it to you. You never get to find out on your own terms, and Sydney's trying to create that. Unfortunately, he's already fucking gone. Now, where the fuck did he go? I guess he got out when they were arguing. Oh! Now, how did you get there? Stab, 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 stab. She's dead. She's dead? Yeah, she's dead. I told you that, though. I told you that she dies. And, I, I, like, you don't really... I mean, like, I don't know. I don't really feel anything that she dies. But I'm more wondering, like, how the fuck did the killer get from the car to there without them seeing him? That was... Because there's two killers. That's oh, a... oh no. and he has blood all over him. He says, "I found Dewey." That that sounds like Dewey's dead, though. Is he telling the truth? Gail is doing the smart thing by by running away. Oh, hey, look who it is! One of the killers. You think she's the killer? Yes. Why is she the killer? Because it was her son. Who? It was her son. Who was her son? Billy? Am I right? Are you right? I don't know. <laughs> Man, Sydney's had a hell of a high school year. Now she's having a hell of a college year. I mean, I guess in a lot of ways you don't really want to be friends with Sydney. <laughs> she must work out a lot, though. Like, to have to run like that. Run so much. <laughs> and not get, like, too tired <laughs> and out of breath. We were at the gym the other day, and I was winded after fucking 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I can't do this anymore. I'm not blaming you, though. It was hard. Corona, quarantine. I know, I used to do so good. We would do like an hour. Fucking this coronavirus has got problem, me like, fat ass, your legs can't work. We need to get back into the groove. Don't, don't beat yourself up. Spotlight. I 
Imagine if it was like the fucking play director, the guy that I was talking to her. That'd be so fucking random. It was me, Sydney. She's probably thinking that too. She's probably like, you <laughs> sick son of a bitch. Because I wouldn't fuck you. Oh, God. You think she wanted to fuck him? Oh, hey! It's. It's. It's gonna be her boyfriend, isn't it? I'm gonna feel like shit. That's in the mask? Derek. But he's still not dead. He's not dead, no. <laughs> she slapped him. <laughs> he's not bleeding. That they wrote that on him. They... There's the killer. You really want to trust your boyfriend? Oh, you hear? He took the voice modulator off. It's Timothy Oliphant. Oh, Roger L. Jackson does the voice of Ghostface when he's on the phone. Amazing voice. Love his voice. You need to have Roger's voice as Ghostface's uh, voice. Always. Now. Did you remember that Toby? That Timothy Oliphant was a killer? City's lying. Did you remember? What? Did you remember that? He was one of the killer. Yes, it Mickey. Did. Okay, okay, okay. I just didn't know if earlier in the movie when you saw him talking, if you knew he was one of them. Okay. Experiencing some deja vu. That's true. Her boyfriend and his friend was the killer in the first movie. She didn't trust him. He wasn't the killer, Tina. Ah, oh, so it was just him and the mother then. You thought that the boyfriend was in on it. It's you, can you never asshole. Trust men. You asshole. You doubted poor Jerry O'Connell this whole time. Oh, to be fair, he definitely played it. Suspicious. I feel like the director, like Wes Craven, told Jerry O'Connell, play it like you're the killer. Because <laughs> there's certain scenes where he looks like he's the killer or he delivers a line to prove his innocence, but he sounds like he's the killer. So they definitely wanted you to think that he was the killer. So I can't really blame you for forgetting that. Now, I'll be honest, having Timothy Oliphant be the killer here is very random. And it seems anticlimactic because you're like, well, who was he to Sydney? He wasn't that close to her. It seems really random. It doesn't make a whole... It, like, it seems underwhelming compared to the first movie that Timothy Oliphant's the, the killer here. But I will say... Well, he does a good job playing the crazy killer speech right now because he 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 too wants the fame he wants the trial he wants like the oj simpson level of fame and oh my god i fucking killed him Woo! that's strong sydney right there that's Badass, super bitch, Sydney. Look at this. Fuck yeah. That's the Sydney that I want. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay. When does the mother show up again? Well, okay, so that's that's the point about Mickey being the killer, is that he's he's really only the killer 
Look, at, he even he even compared her to Linda Hamilton, uh, Sarah Connor from Terminator, because obviously badass female character. There wasn't too many of them back in the day. You had really back in the day, as far as strong female characters, you had what? It's yeah. Now she knows, she recognized, they did a good job of never showing her near Sydney throughout the whole movie until this. Because she's going to recognize that she's Billy's mom. Yeah, so this is why the reveal works. Because Mickey, you just kind of feel like, well, Mickey's a random character. He probably did most of the physical kills, right? So that's really what he was there to, to just pull off most of the kills. How'd she get him to do it? Because she promised him the fame of everything that comes with... Because he's a big movie buff. He's, he's, he's kind of like he twisted. He wants to be the killer. He wa yes, he wanted that fame that came with the stab movie, right? He wanted to be a part of that. Now, she just killed him because she used him. She never really gave a fuck about it. Oh, no, Gail just got shot. But, yeah, so she used Mickey because that wasn't what she really wanted. She really wanted revenge on Sydney for killing her son. So, having her be the killer, or at least the mastermind of it, makes it more interesting because now you have Pamela Voorhees, right? Now you have the mother being psychotic and the killer, and she's getting revenge on the son. It's the reverse Jason story, you know? So, I do like that. I do like that. And I think her being the killer is a lot more interesting but physically, you wouldn't buy her being the killer for all the other scenes. That's really why why Mickey's there. Um, you know. <laughs> but I will say that you could argue a big criticism of every one of these screen movies is that every one of these killers feels like they have to, for 20 minutes, explain their whole plot to Sydney, <laughs> which creates the opportunity for Sydney to eventually get back and kill them. But you could also argue that if they're going to spend as much time and effort as they spent to fuck with her and to eventually kill Sydney, they're going to want to gloat about it, right? I think that's why I bought that with Billy and Stu, and, and given their age, their high school kids, they're going to want to fucking brag about how they pulled this off Yeah, they're immature. They're immature, right. Mm -hmm. And she's psychotic, and she just wants to basically say, fuck you, you killed my son. Uh, you know, so it's not till probably the third movie. When she's the one who really took off, and she should blame herself. Cause right, because she, she, she left when Sydney's mother slept with Billy's father. So she left. So she, yes. I, I think there is a part of her. It's her fault. But just like Billy, though, they blame the mom. The mom is the one who slept with the father. The mom is the slut. The mom is the one who ruined the family. And so she's probably thinking, I never would have left. Billy would have never have gotten killed if your mom wasn't a whore. Right? I'm not saying that makes sense. I'm not saying that they're right. That's where their logic is, though. And also, when it comes to certain people, a lot of people can't look at themselves as the problem, right? A lot of people can't look at themselves and take blame for things. They have to pass that blame on to others. So it's going to be very easy for her to blame Sydney and Maureen Prescott. And blame everybody else for why their life went to shit. And why her son was killed. And why her son was fucking whacked out of his skull. But let's be honest. 
her son was so into horror movies and so into like sick shit like that, he probably would have ended up being a Columbine kid anyways. <laughs> you know what I mean? This just gave him a direction to go. I do like Sydney using this on her right now. She kind of like, this is another moment of Sydney being strong here. And outsmarting the killer. Which you don't see that a lot in horror movies. Why won't she drop her gun? Who, the mother? Yes. Like, I mean, that's her... She's doing all these things. That's her like, only weapon. She, like, drop the gun. Well, I'm pretty sure that these aren't real rocks. So, I think she's fine right now. And you could argue that she, she could probably have just left the stage and not... Like, although maybe she was still trying to get to Sydney, I don't know. Ah! Where did she get the knife? Uh, from, um, from Mickey, from Timothy Oliphant. He had a knife. And I will say that this actress has a really good, scary, crazy face. I instantly buy her as Billy's crazy fucking mom. Now, here's Cotton Weary. You don't know. Look at You really don't know what Cotton is capable of. Because he clearly hates Sydney. And, he, and him wanting to kill Sydney. Or at least do something bad to her. I'm not saying I would do it too, but I certainly understand why he, he hates her. He should pretend to be on her side. I understand why he hates Sydney, though. I do. I get it. I get it. And at the end of the day, the killers never went after him. He doesn't have any real beef with her, the mother, the killer. And see, at the end of the day, yeah, like, he could just let her kill Sydney, and it doesn't mean anything, like, it doesn't. And this whole speech that she's giving Cotton, probably very similar to the speech that she gave Mickey. Um, for a year, that's a long time. That's, that's very true. A year's a long time. It's almost like, oh yeah, that was the fucking worst thing ever. <laughs> she makes a good point. <laughs> the Diane Sawyer interview is looking real good right now. <laughs> Oh my god, what are you going to do, Kyan? You got it. Consider it done. Fuck you. Oh, now, now, now we don't know who we shot. Although, you see Sydney blinking there. She's fine. There you go. He shot Mrs. Loomis. <laughs> that was intense. <laughs> oh, did he shoot her right in the neck there? Yeah. Yikes. That, that's a pretty decent shot. And I like how he says, hey, you know, I, I wasn't really going to hurt you, Sydney. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Gail, nine lives. 
See, Gail is starting to is starting to rack up her badass points herself. She was almost almost killed in the first movie. This movie, she was shot and survived. Now you got more lives than the cat. There you go. And here is your moment that's very similar to Scream 1, where, uh, but Randy was in the male role. Uh, they always come back. That's what Randy said. He said that the, you get... Oh, hey, whoa, 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 Mickey. Jesus. Yeah, right? Right. <laughs> Cotton just ducked down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that it was the girls who, who fucking had it. Look at it. Boom! Headshot. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's the same uh, chief from the first movie, by the way. Very random, I know. Oh, hey! Her cameraman's back. You know, I thought... You said he wasn't coming you're back! You're right, you're right. I you thought, lied! I thought that was the last we saw of him. But to be fair, to be fair, he still survived. And he only survived because he did leave. But yes, you know what? He did come back. Uh, I would argue that you probably don't need him to come back here. I do like this moment, though, where Gail doesn't Dewey. get... Dewey! Dewey is somehow alive. Once again... And here's the moment where I think we officially established them being. Hey, she doesn't care about the story. Right, she, she, she's picking him over the story. Right, right, right. She's not even thinking about it. She's, she's going right. I'm coming with you. Hey, look at that. I do like that moment. If you're gonna keep Dewey alive, that was a really nice moment. And they're probably going to look back at this movie and be like, see, we had good times. I mean, I'm, I'm sure he rewatches the movie and, and, and thinks like that. I, I don't know how much Coney Cox gives a shit. She's, Why does she have to be the bitch? Well, because she has ten years of friends to go back and watch. You know? <laughs> so? Sydney just told them to talk to Cotton that he... he has the real story, which he very much appreciated. <laughs> it would make a hell of a movie. There you go. And they're gonna have a stab two, stab three. Well, Scream 3 is them making stab three, I think. I don't remember if, if they ever talk about what Stab 2... I, I assume Stab 2 was just the same shit that we're seeing here. Kind. I don't see them reenact... I don't remember them reenacting Stab 2, though. But Scream 3 is supposed to be about them making Stab 3. Directed by Wes Craven. Wes Who Craven. wasn't in this movie. Written by Kevin Williamson. Kevin Williamson, I will say, great script... Uh, he wrote the first Scream, which is my favorite horror movie of all time. That script is amazing. He wrote this movie that I very much enjoy. I think he only had probably a couple months, if that, probably less, to write this. Now, there are clearly things that he planted in the first movie, like Cotton Weary, and like certain things. He probably had ideas of what to do for a possible sequel if they were to do it. Like, Billy's mom being the killer makes a lot of sense. Cotton Weary playing as big of a role as he does makes a lot of sense. There's certain things in this movie. Hey, look at Denny Elfman worked on some of this uh, score. Look at that. Um, but, not just Tim Burton shit. No, yeah. And, and not just the Tom McGuire Spider-Man. But, th look, there's clearly things that Kevin Williamson had ideas for in a sequel, but he wrote the script, like a full script, he wrote very quick. And so, given the time that he had to make the script work, 
I think this movie is a hell of a lot better than it had it had a right to be. This could have sucked. This could have been a train wreck. This could have been terrible. I'm not saying it's perfect. It's certainly not perfect. But it's still very good. I can't believe you died. I know, Randy, Jim Candy. I can't even drink with you anymore because I already drank Lori Metcalf. Lori Metcalf. I was trying to remember her name earlier. Wasn't important. Well, you know. Deranged mother. Yeah. Timothy Oliphant. Jada Pinkett. Yeah. Was she not no, married she to... No, she wasn't married to... She wasn't married to Will Smith yet. Leah Schreiber. So, overall, I feel like I've been... Louis Arquette. Is, is he related to David Arquette? Is he David Arquette's father? I don't know. The sheriff? Gotta look that up. Okay, so really quick, because I've already said my piece. How did you feel about Scream 2? I liked it. You enjoyed it? I did. Solid? Yeah. Better than the first or no? No, the first I enjoyed better. Of course, of course, of course. But, as far as sequels go, I've seen many of, plenty of sequels that shit the bed, that Fuck me over. Disappoint me. Yes, I don't love that Randy dies. Yes, I don't love that the first characters who die are the black characters. But there are many things I do like. I don't love that Sarah Michelle Gellar gets killed as quick as she does. But those... That especially is a minor nitpick. For the most part, the movie is uh, good. The movie yeah. does work. As well as it does. Louis Arquette is David Arquette's father. That's funny. I just now realized that. I never knew that. Wow. That that that's good stuff. It's good stuff. He's in the first two movies with him. That's cool. That's cool. I wonder if David Arquette's ever done a movie with uh, Patricia Arquette, his sister. Wow. His spouse is Brenda Dinette. Who? Dinette. Who? Brenda Dinette. Who, who's spouse? And he, uh, David, um, Louis? Louis okay. Arquette. Okay, who is she? And they were married from 1963 to 1997. That is a long ass time. That's like 34 years or some shit. Yeah, wow. Hey, look at Steve Austin is on the video playback. I don't think it's that Steve Austin, but I just I just caught that. So yeah, guys, I really enjoy Scream 2. I think she it's died in 1997. Oh, so that's the only reason why they, uh, why that ended there. I really enjoy Scream 2. I think it's a solid, solid sequel. I think horror movie sequel go. There's not a lot of good horror movie sequels. I will say that Scream is up there, There's probably not top ten. A lot of good sequels. Well, in general, yeah, but, but horror movie sequels, it's rough. It's hard. Sequels in general, it's hard. True, true. So I feel like this movie is good enough. It's not perfect. It's good enough. And it's solid. Scream 2. I enjoyed it. I love Nev Campbell. It doesn't say he was in Scream 1. I thought he was, no? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But um, let us know, guys, in the comments below, what do you think of Scream 2? Do you like it? Do you love it? Is it one of your favorite horror movie sequels? Do it's you... a good Netflix and chill or date movie. Do you think it... Maybe you don't like it. Let us know why, why not. Did you suspect the boyfriend, too? Was it just me? I mean, even though you've seen this movie already. I know, and I have a horrible memory. Every time we watch this movie, this, this is like the third time we've seen it. <laughs> I know. It every was, time was, you yeah. think Jerry O'Connell is It's always the boyfriend. <laughs> every is time. Just me? You're like, I don't trust him. <laughs> and I, and I, I mean, even Let now. Me know. I felt like saying, don't you know that he's not the killer? We've been through this already. Um, but yeah, so 
that was a lot of fun. Let us know also if you want us to do Scream 3. We will keep doing it if you guys want it. Thanks for watching. Like, like comment, subscribe. Later!